<laughs> it's like 10 degrees warmer in here. Perfect. I want to make my first pan de coco perfect. Margarine, <laughs> sugar, Margarine. and bread crumbs. Oh my god. The size of these things? That kind of. These are my yeah. things to do. Back to the bakery. Back to the bakery we go. Today is a journey unlike any other. I should say a food trip. Our first stop is here on the south side of the fourth largest lake in the Philippines, Lake Mainit. In the municipality of Jabonga, Agusan del Norte, this restaurant is famous for its freshwater eel. Welcome to Bueno Cucina. You guys, good morning. Welcome back to another vlog. You know where we are now, and we're about to dive into some food to get some breakfast in our tummies. I just look so well. Some pinakbet to start, which literally means shriveled or shrunk. So here we are, having some shriveled mixed vegetables, including this pink shrimp bagaong coated squash. Yeah. It was. Now how about some honey buttered wings? I'm not a wing guy. Oh, I literally just drip. Nor do I prefer deep fried things, but when in Rome, and when the chef provides, just shut up and eat it, okay? Oh my God, that's so good. Now for the main event. Lake Mainit Eel, baby. Let me try to explain what's going on here because it was nice. I'm gonna try the sauce. It's what the, the heck? Yeah. Citrusy, sweet, coconutty, creamy. Wow. And eel meat in general is just very fatty fish as it is. Oh my god. That's awesome. Mm. Dude, eel is truly one of my most favorite fish. And it's just so thick, mm. the texture. It's like ninja berries. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. This is today's chef, Harold. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Thank, Thank you, you for having us here. Food is phenomenal. Oh, it tastes good. It's so good. There's so many different flavor notes in there, but like the citrus and the, the coconut milk. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. man. It's. And it's I, awesome. And I know why you wanted to start. Vinegar, sweet. Uh, okay. Ming, mango vinaigrette. Oh, you mean mango vinaigrette. Okay. Shout out to my guy, Harold. I will be back, brother. But we gotta hit the road, Jack. Back to a place where we just recently were. <laughs> So I'm bringing Kyle to the same place where I had the most beautiful yempo I ever did have. Oh, you gotta, Brett, Port side. You gotta pay for yours. I know, I gotta pay for mine now. Anyway. 210 for one. Oh. <laughs> I got liempo in the face, man. I got liempo face. <laughs> Trust me, I did not think I was gonna be back here this soon. We're back. We're taking a different boat. We're going to a new location. Spur of the moment trip. Let's do this. This is pretty funny. Never in any other country have I seen everybody has to back up onto the ferry. Because it's- It's a one of one. <laughs> I'll eat some pork. I'll eat some meat. I just want to see your reaction to this pork. It looks very tender. It's flaky. Flaky pork. Flaky pork. Flaky, juicy. Ah, oh, yeah, that's super good. I don't even need sauce. Why no, do you... I know. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's actually pretty good, right? It's amazing. Right? Um, this is 
so that. good. Mmm. Mmm. It kind of tastes like lechon. Mmm. You've never even experienced a fast cat like in a long time, have mm. you? No. I get a car wash tomorrow. Mm. A quick little late night ferry trip with the boys. A Pokemon Japanese inspired freight truck. Yeah, this thing was so dope. I love Pokemon so much. And if you don't, well, you're just weird, man. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes, I can't believe we're back in Allen. I even brought my surfboard with me because you never know where the swell might pop up in these remote areas. This is so dope, Capo Express. This is surreal. Let's get it. The last time you would have seen this badass bike was Fighter Boys Season 2. The crazy thing was, it's the same driver that picked us all up the last time we were here. Four years ago. I know. My guy's got a sixth sense. It's like 10 degrees warmer in here. More. Honestly, at this point, we are the Food Network. The day will come where we take Brett's table around the world. Mark my words. Anyways, we arrived at our hotel and directly beside us was this legendary bakery. Glem's. I couldn't resist but to peek my head inside. And after I did, I wanted to get hands on. So I introduced myself to the family. And as any Filipino family would, they took me right under their wings allowing my presence to be present for the next few hours. So what's the, what's the story again with your name? It's it's your siblings? Yes. So My father, Heronjo, lay of my brother, eldest sister, Merle, my mother. And you're a combination of them all. My, uh, my name is Glem. Glem, that's amazing. That's the result. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Now you know. Let's get this bread. Actually, wait. Listen to this machine. I don't have any idea what this thing is called, but it's like a giant pasta maker, but for bread. Dangerous AF. No, thank you. I did not attempt. Check out their collection of bread. They make Willy Wonka's factory here at Glem's look like nothing. It, it's hot in here. Everybody's sweating. Look at I got I got a Mrs. Pai Pai cooling me down. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat. Cool. This is incredible. Like I love you doing everything by hand. Oh my god. You need that. Look at this pizza. Oh my god. Let's make some bandy coco. <laughs> I know you guys know this already, but we're gonna do it again because this is the first step of making the filling for the bandy coco. No way. Oh my gosh. Dude, you're showing us done. Okay, we 
Okay, lunch, that's awesome. <laughs> like a pro, huh? <laughs> so look at that. What do you do with the water? Can I drink it? Yeah. A lot of people in the Philippines, they don't, they, you guys don't drink it. How come? I, I guess it's just such a, like a normal thing. Like, I don't know, for me, coming from Canada, like coconut juice is so hard to find, especially, thank you, Salamat, when it's this fresh. And, Look at that! I can't let that go to waste. I just, I can't. Oh, it's so good. And it's so hydrating. So this, what I'm sitting on, is a kaguran. But the, the action is called kagud. Ah, learning stuff every day, I swear. So that big old pile of shredded coconut mix, that was 15 of these. Yes. What is your other best seller? Spanish bread. Oh, the Spanish bread, okay. If I had to do 15 of these coconuts, pfft, I'd be dead. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna see how it's done. A true work of art. Kagud is a craft that always humbles me. I always thought too that you really want to get every bit of the inside of the coconuts, but I think that also allows a bit of the, the shell in it if you really clean it out. So this is like, perfect. Here is step two in making pad of cocoa. We're gonna cook the coconut fluff, or whatever you wanna call it. The shreds, the shredded coconut. Peekaboo, baby. It's pan de coco time. I mean, of course, it starts with the bread, but we're doing the filling first, okay? I'll explain why in just a sec. Weighing all the ingredients one by one. First, the coconut. In the pot. Bang. Sugar. Bang. Add it on top. Flour. Dust it in there. Kadoosh. Lastly, some friggin' margarine, buddy. Mix that up and there you go. This is the innards of the bandicoco. It's time to heat it up. I was just telling Glam. Ever since I tried Panda Coco for the first time, back in, I think, 2017, I always wanted to actually make it. So for me to be here and make it with these guys in their house, this is your guys' house, that's special. It's, all, it's like clicking off something off the bucket list. We're just half cooking it, because obviously it's got to go in the oven afterwards, so we don't want to cook it entirely through. Half cook, and then in the oven. Oh my god. It's so good. It tastes like, just like rock cookie dough almost. Mmm. I have to get a little bit more. Oh. I don't even want to bake it, it's so good. Look at, Clem got me Hi. an apron. I'm becoming a real baker today. It kind of suits me, huh? This whole apron thing. Oh, hey, that was pretty good. That fits you. It fits me well, right? <laughs> this is awesome, okay. So the next step is to fill the bread. Back to the bakery. Back to the bakery we go. Back to the bakery, where all the magic happens. It's like 10 degrees warmer in here. More. Yeah. Oh, please. Because of the oven. Yeah, because of the big oven. All right, where am I putting this? Here? Ah, uh -huh. I gotta see how it's done first. What? I 
could barely keep up with this guy. He was moving so swiftly. Damn. Scooping that coconut filling up like it's nothing. Slapping it together. I mean, come on. How beautiful is that? I didn't get up early enough today to see how the bread was made, but just just simple, simple ingredients, right? Lard, yeast, bread improver, just, you know, classic bread stuff. <laughs> okay, so, like this. Make it like flat, like a pancake, kind of. Oh, so you, do, you wipe it. He just like scoops it. I want to make it perfect. I want to make my first pan de coco perfect. <laughs> Lower your expectations, bud. Because my first one looked like the face of a troll. I mean, I tried my best though. That's all that matters. Something that looks so simple has taken years to perfect. So respect to Otoy here. It's making this look so effortless. It feels so good too. It feels like Play-Doh or something. Yeah, so you basically make a little pancake, stretch it out, you do, 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 scoop her up. Just enough, like that. Like that? Yeah, sorry about the angle. I'm telling you, I need a cameraman. This is not easy. <laughs> oh, that was actually pretty good. Hey! That's, that's awesome. it. Okay, that's it. And off they go for a little nap. Well, there it goes. Freshly made pan de coco going in the oven. How long does it take? Five minutes. Uh, five minutes only? Five minutes to bake these things. So we'll be right back in five minutes. Bless you. And over here behind me is the, the Spanish bread. And it's, the filling is sugar and butter. That's what's going in the Spanish bread. Look at this. Rolling it up like a little doobie. Schmoke and a pancake, how you doing? I think both of these are Spanish breads. Just different pre-rolled sizes. I could be wrong. I'm working up a freaking sweat here. It's, it's hot, it's hot. There's fans everywhere too to keep everybody cool. No bread goes to waste, as you can see here, on top of this flaming hot iron oven. Is this iron? Yeah. Ah, it's iron. I know my metals, apparently. Everything here, it's getting toasted up. Toasted and roasted. Batted and ratted. The fluff is the stuff that the bready bombs get a bath in before they hit the oven. Enjoy, my friends. That's okay. This is the Spanish bread that they just made, fresh out of the oven. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. I don't think it can get any better than this. Like, oh my God. This is incredible. And what? what's more amazing, that's only five pesos. Uh, five, yeah, what? Five pesos. Five pesos. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so good. It almost is like, is there any salt in it or no? Ah, the margarine probably has a little bit of salt. It's like perfectly balanced. Sometimes bread can either be like too sweet or too salty, or too floury, or whatever, but you guys have nailed it. Years of experience gives you the most delicious bread. So this is your best seller. It's a Spanish bread, okay. Mm. I get why. Oh. 
bake a lot when I was a kid. So like the smell of this smells like my childhood. Can you take a photo of me with that before you do? Yeah. Sweet. Alright, let's do this. Okay, here we go. Glam's Bakery here in Kapool, freshly made pan de coco. Let's go. So much substance to it. The size of these things, that kind of... This These should, are five yeah, pesos too? This should be more than five pesos. This is amazing. It's so big. So much filling. Mmm. Mmm. No, I'm quite hot. <laughs> this is good. Um, you know what I love? Anything coconut, even when mixed with other stuff, it's not super sweet. No. It's like comforting. Yeah. It's just like a relaxing wave of sweetness. It's so good. I want to dip it in like sequate or like... It's perfect. There's like a little crust exterior on the outside. A little bit of crisp to it. Your teeth just sink into like the under layer of the exterior. And then you go into the, the coconut <gasps> mixture with the butter and the sugar and flour and it just... I mean, it is home-baked. We're in their house. You can taste the love. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Adding more mix to the mix. So good. Mm. Oh, we got waters. Oh my god, you guys are so amazing. Thank you so much. I'm not just saying this because these guys are here right now. This is the best bandicoot I've had in the Philippines in my life. And the love and the energy in this building that creates this type of product. Thank you for letting me in your bakery. It's honestly it was so much fun. Oh, it's so awesome. I'll definitely be back here too. It's an honor to be able to experience this whole thing. It's 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 a dream come true. I crossed it off the bucket list. I freaking made pan to sell. <laughs> you guys, that is the vlog for today. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed that today. I did immensely and I can't thank that whole family enough for allowing me in their home, making their 40 year old panda cell, panda cocoa bread. Maybe even older than that. I don't know where the recipe came from, but we'll see you soon. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, that subscribe button. Slap that matter backing like button upside head. If you enjoyed today's video, I'm gonna go for a swim. See you guys in the next one. It's okay if I take a video inside? It was so cool. I'm gonna come out of house! So much Cobra! Woo! Masarap kainin! Oh, it's, it's bango! <laughs> it smells so good! Wow! So this is the other business that Glenn and their family have is, is Copra. It's, you make coconut oil with it. Coconut oil, soap, 